This is The Ugly Truth coming to you live from Dufferin Grove Park on Dufferin Street in Toronto, uh, just south of Bloor, north of College Street. Um, it is Saturday, September the 10th, 2011, and today uh, activists from many uh, different uh, community organizations uh, have mobilized and gathered here at Dufferin Grove Park, uh, I guess to plan and uh, create a list of demands for the uh, city's mayor, Rob Ford. One of uh, Ford's platforms when he was elected uh, last year was that he was going to cut costs and, uh, you know, trim the fat, stop the gravy train, so to speak. But uh, what we're seeing is uh, the cuts are actually, a lot of them coming from, uh, you know, the public sector, the, the tax dollars that people pay for services. Uh, many of these services are being cut while money is being spent on other services which uh, perhaps the public don't feel we need more. For example, uh, I guess there's a, a hope by the Ford government to uh, hire more police officers and expand the Toronto uh, police force. And uh, not all citizens of the city feel that this is a wise expenditure of money being that the crime rate is going down. Uh, they'd rather see the money spent on other things uh, to help the communities and help us specifically the poor. So anyway, I'm here to cover the event. We'll see uh, what's going on and uh, maybe we can speak to a few people, find out why they're here and why it's important to them. Thank you for uh, speaking to us here at We Are Change. Um, please tell us your name and uh, why we're here today. My name is Nigel Barif and I'm a school teacher in Etobicoke North, Rob Ford's writing and I came down here to be with Stop the Cuts because I believe that it's important for all the residents around the city to come together in order to demand the type of city that we want. How do you feel about the turnout today what so far? What a great turnout. I've had a chance to connect with um, uh, people from communities from um, you know over in Malvern and Scarborough, um, you know down south you know in Riverdale and what I realized is that we're all feeling the same way. We're not feeling heard by this current administration. That he um, he promised in our ward. You know, we we're Ford Nation. We voted for him, right? So he promised to make sure that he wouldn't um, he wouldn't cut the services that we're dependent upon. He promised that he would cut the gravy, which we agreed with. Okay, sure, cut the fat, but don't cut the services that we're dependent upon. As a school teacher, um, I teach uh, I teach elementary school children. And at the beginning of the year, we take them to the Albion Library, for instance. And 50% um, of my children don't have access to the internet. So when we, when I heard that he's going to get ready to cut, the, you know, might be cutting some of the libraries, I thought, again, this is going to have a detrimental effect on our community. The poorest, one a very black and brown community, very high immigrant, lots of single mothers. And so having these types of cuts are going to detrimentally affect, it's going to have a more detrimental effect on our community than it will on Forest Hill or Rosedale. Have you seen much uh, mainstream media here today so far to cover the event? Um, you, you know, some of the mainstream media has dropped in. Um, I think it's um, obviously much more important that we have media outlets like yourself that are coming here to, to really get the true facts on the ground out, grassroots type of media. This is where we need to be. Um, because this is an ideological fight that we're in. This is an, a fight about whether do the rich pay or do maybe do we squeeze more out of the poor. This is about, you know, um, about okay. putting more money right, in the I'm hands of corporations and care, individuals brother. instead of actually taking care of um, the people who need the help the most. So it's, it's been a great day for us to come together and that we need to make sure that we keep fighting for the kind of city that we, that we want. 
Thanks once again for your time. Keep fighting the good fight. What Best love. of luck. Said all you gotta believe is the truth. All the attendees at today's meeting uh, have all broken up into different groups. I believe each group is uh, based on a, a specific issue. So people are, uh, I guess, joining the groups for the issues that matter to them the most. And I guess within those groups, they're brainstorming and trying to decide, uh, you know, to come up with a list of demands of things that should not be cut by uh, Ford's administration. I guess once we, they gather a list of all the different demands, uh, they're going to go and present them before a city council uh, prior to them uh, making up the new budget for the next year. So we'll see uh, what people decide is important to them, what they want to keep and what uh, they don't want cut. And we'll see once that list of demands is brought to City Hall, if uh, they actually listen to the people. It's not good. No. Focusing on waste, creating incentives to, for reduction, and reducing energy consumption. Thank you. So, thank you. What amazing work people have done. Let's give ourselves a hand. But these things are not going to happen just because they're right and just because they're just. We all know that the mayor is opposing this from top to bottom, and it's going to take action to actually make this happen. All right, folks, sit back, relax, and let's listen to a hundred dollars. Knowing this here was dry land, I worked with the best. Only one on the crew they could trust. And sure as his drill ripped right deep in the ground, his hard work leave his last place I'm a machine. I see them trash bin every morning. The wheels well broken, fast and fast. Traitorous tracks, they're slanty faces. Who let home take their path? Yeah, with one pull of the lever. Take my arms in their bed. So I sit in a deep valley, and it's all in water I'm under. Come home from work, contemplating the end. To help lead us off with that, Kelly O'Sullivan is going to come and talk a little bit about some proposed actions that will get our minds working for the breakout groups that are to follow. Kelly? The president of QP Local 4308, representing over 400 community and healthcare workers. I'm a member of the Stop the Cuts Network, OCAP, and a supporter of many grassroots community initiatives. The Stop the Cuts Network came together in this city because we can't just talk about what needs to happen. We have to take action. Words and messages aren't going to change what happens down at City Hall. We have to be ready to mobilize, resist. If they want to try to plan to take apart our city, to shut down services, close daycares, libraries, cut programs to LGBT, are we going to stand there and let them do it? That's the question for all of us here today. That space is our space. 
Let's take it back and let our voices be heard. Right now, your delegates are meeting over to my right. They're crafting a people's declaration. We're going to come back together in about 45 minutes, and we're all going to vote on the people's declaration. We're going to finalize it and create it together. We could have representatives from each group come forward to just briefly talk about actions. What we're going to do now is have a brief report back on actions. So the first group to report back on action. Hi, I was working with the people who are uh, interested in health care. I have three pages, but I'll try not to be too boring. Uh, a first simple, easy thing to do on your Facebook page, make sure you post the No More Cuts page. Use your local networks to put out the call for September 26th. For example, Nursing Association, uh, promise food for September 26th. Send the word out to uh, outlying places like Hamilton uh, and then help them get here. This is uh, Jade and Finch Rexdale's action plan for support. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Sector workers. So we've met, we had a lot of expertise from uh, a lot of uh, different people. We've decided that uh, on December 31st, uh, many city contracts expire. And that means that we have both a crisis and a golden opportunity. I am from the child care group. Um, we'll be taking similar actions to the September 22nd occupation of Rob Ford's office at counselors' offices around the city as part of a broad child care campaign. I represent group 12 libraries. We spoke about a number of ways to come out and talk about this issue, but the easiest thing that any of us can do is, is deputations. If you can, be there on the 19th, talk to city council, tell them how you feel about all this. And if you can't, write them. Email them or send them a letter or something and make your voice heard. We're from Group 8 Housing. Um, one of the things that we want, uh, that we put forward is housing, um, affordable housing is not gravy. Um, it's essential and everyone should have housing. And services Group. I'm just going to quickly go over uh, some of the actions that are already going to be happening in the city and then my my uh, colleague here will go after uh, the action that we decided today. The idea that we have come up with is doing a general strike. I think uh, we're going to have a Rob Ford be lazy sit on your ass day. Uh, so pretty much uh, Wednesday on the 21st, we're proposing that everyone stop spending. Don't go out and go shopping. Don't go out and buy gas. Sit at home and be Rob Ford and do nothing and but eat. We're proposing it for the 21st, the 28th, and October, uh, October the 5th, and show him what it likes to have things cut off. Let's hit the economy before they allow it to hit us. I just had some ideas on behalf of the transit group. Um, the first, of course, is to uh, do a protest, but possibly in front of Rob Ford's house. It's pretty big and hard to miss. I'm going to keep this short. My name is Zoe. I'm from the LGBTQ group over there. So. That's right, that's right. So uh, people in our group are going to commit to taking the all-day training, going to the Breakfast of Champions, attending the other actions, and supporting the actions on the 26th and 27th. 15, the Spanish-speaking uh, community, and uh, what we are doing is we're organizing a caravan from uh, San Lorenzo, which is uh, Lawrence and Dufferin on the uh, September 26th to support the rally. So, Hi, my name is Michelle and I'm speaking on behalf of the Parks and Recreation and Community Centers um, Working Group. We want to invite people to have a, to create a play-in. So bring your sports equipment or your yoga mat or your football, whatever. Bring it to Nathan Phillips Square to the action on the 26th and the 27th and play and have fun. From uh, Devonport, Perth, no, group number four. Basically, we broke it down to um, a few things, uh, community engagement going into like faith centers, um, farmers markets, anywhere that people are, you know, are just gathering, cafes and stuff, and engage people in discussion. It's Leslie and I'm uh, representing Parkdale. We were over there, area number six. Uh, the number one idea we came up with is to ask everybody in every area to uh, massive uh, email, snail mail, voicemail, uh, city councilors in your area and, and tell them, you know, that you're against all of these cuts. I'm going to invite Jenny Pito from the Stop the Cuts Network to come on up here. She is going to read to you the results of the work of the delegates 
and that we are going to, as a mass, as a group of residents of Toronto, we are going to vote on this declaration. So welcome, Jenny. So in your welcome packages is something that we call the preamble to the Toronto Declaration. It's what sets up the demands, and I'm going to read it now, and then I'm going to go into those demands. Feel free to clap and boo as necessary, depending on what I'm talking about. This is your declaration. I want you to get into it. So knowing that the $774 million budget deficit is an exaggeration and a manufactured crisis that is being used as an excuse to cut services, hike user fees, privatize public services, and lay off workers. And knowing that the city is planning to cut services and lay off workers during an economic crisis. They are making these cuts at a time when we desperately need more, better services and good jobs. And so here it is. We, the people of Toronto, demand. All public services are vital to communities. We reject any attempts to divide and conquer by pitting community groups against each other in a battle for funding. Good public services are what ensure safe communities. We demand that the city police budget, which just, by the way, increased by 12% this year, should be cut. We recognize and appreciate the important history of workers' struggles in this city. We reject the privatization of our public city services. And again, we refuse to be divided. As communities, we will defend good jobs, decent wages, collective bargaining rights, worker safety, and equity. And you, the people of this city, have given us a people's mandate, a strong declaration of why we need to fight. And this will carry us through to the fight at City Council now and beyond as they come after our services. Thank you guys so much for all your work today.